Now let's take a look at rotary engraving workflows for the SRM20. This workflow will allow for the engraving on all sorts of materials like composites and wood for gift marking, mechanical plastics for awards and keepsakes, discrete marking for serialized tags and material like this, along with conventional sheet engraving for things like name tags, small signs, and much more. As we review the engraving workflow, we will go through tool setup, material loading, setting the origin, and a simple job setup and output to the machine. To get started, we left off with the accessory installation kit, briefly reviewing the tooling options for this machine. Now, if you recall, there is a diamond scribing tool and a V-bit option. Currently, we will be using the V-bit, which was left uh, in the spindle from previous video. But if you need to add a tool or change it out for any reason, again, it's very simple. We will use our 17 millimeter spanner to hold the spindle, our 10 millimeter wrench at the bottom to hold the collet, and turning in will loosen, turning out will tighten. One other thing to note here is that I have about an inch of exposed tool here, just to ensure that I have enough reach to uh, make contact with my engraving material, uh, and enough to really hold the shank within the collet itself. Make sure you have the collet nice and snug to ensure that the tool doesn't rattle loose or adjust during operations. Following the tool setup, let's take a look at loading material. We left off with our AS10 sheet uh, secured to our bed here with our indexing fixture on the left. Let's go ahead and remove the liner of the AS10 sheet. All right, we can now set up the SRM20 for simple sheet engraving. So I'm going to go and take this, this material uh, by the way, this is a two-tone material. We have red on top, white underneath, and we'll be cutting through the red to reveal the contrast of our graphics. We're going to nudge this into the corner of that indexing fixture, place that like so, and then give it a nice press to, to ensure that it is secured to the bed. Next, let's go ahead and use the SRM20 V panel to jog our spindle to the origin point. Now for this uh, engraving example, we're going to set the origin at the bottom left so we can go ahead and use the directional arrows of the V panel to get our tool there. By default, uh, our jog steps for the V panel are pretty slow, so I'm going to adjust the cursor steps right below the directional arrows to continue. And that will allow me to uh, more quickly move to my intended origin point. All right, so now that you can see I'm in the ballpark, uh, we want to set our XY origin to the bottom left of this material with our tool just touching the tip of the engraving surface. So now that I'm within range, I'm going to adjust my cursor steps down so that I have a slower, more accurate movement. Now that our origin set, we can go through a simple job setup and output through VCarve Desktop to the SRM20. To get started, we can go ahead and open VCarve Desktop and create a new job setup here. I'll go ahead and set this one for six by six inches with a material thickness of about 0.07, uh, setting up our sheet plastic. Uh, next up on this list, I'll go ahead and change our XY datum position 
uh, in other words, our set origin on the machine to the bottom left. This will correspond the software origin with what is set on the machine. Click OK to confirm. Alright, and now our artboard has been created. I'm going to jump over to this other copy of VCOV Desktop, which I already have the file set up and toolpaths loaded. And I can walk you through what we have uh, set up here all the way to where we output to the machine. First up, you'll notice we have some graphics loaded in here. Uh, I simply went to the file menu, imported the graphic, imported vectors, and included uh, the open come in sign here. I'll go ahead and include, include a link to this along with the actual vcarve save file below so you can follow along that way as well. Anyways, once that is loaded, uh, I really want to break down this graphic and create a simple path. So uh, my first thought is to select the text here, which is all grouped, create a quick engraving path. Uh, now we can start to view what this job will look like. Uh, everything with this shaded mark here is going to cut through to the white. Everything visible white will become a uh, will be left red, so we'll be left with this very high contrast sign when we're finished. So anyways, I have three tool paths set. Uh, if you want to keep this very simple, just follow along with step one, send it to the machine, and you are all set. Um, but if you want to complete this actual pop-out sign, uh, stick around and we'll go through the whole process. All right, let's take a look at text engraving. So all I did to set my text engraving here was select the path in which I wanted to create the toolpath. Go up to our toolpath options. Uh, in this case, I'll go ahead and select quick engraving toolpath. And that will prompt our setup for this toolpath. First up, we want to select the tool in which we seek to use. I'm going to go ahead and select the select option. And you can see I've preset an engraving tool here. Uh, now I'll, I'll go ahead and include a link to this tool if you'd like to load it in. I'd recommend that just because it is specced off of the tool included with the uh, engraving accessory kit so you can match up everything. Now you can follow along and create your own tool right now uh, using these values, but it's basically setting the tool geometry uh, to what we have loaded within the system. So once we have our engraving v-bit selected, uh, I'll go ahead and hit select, and that will save our tool for that toolpath. Below that, we will see the depth, and this is the depth in which we rem seek to remove engraving material. Uh, so I'm just going to go about 0.02 inches, enough uh, to cut through the red plastic and create some dimension, but not too much to where we risk punching through the back of the material. Everything else uh, we can leave defaulted here, uh, but one of the big ones will be setting the machine in which we seek to output to. So you'll notice that I have these post processors listed in this field. Basically you can open up the post processor list, browse to the Roland devices here, and find the SRM20. Note that there are two SRM20 post processors. Uh, the first one is labeled D-Drag, which will disable the spindle rotation, allowing for simple diamond dragging, which we'll get to later. Uh, the one we want to use is the Roland SRM20 post. Next up, uh, we want to output directly to the machine and select the actual device driver here. So here's my SRM20, click OK. And now we can see we have the correct post. The software is pointing to the correct output driver and we are ready to go. If for whatever reason your post processors or are not included, uh, not to worry, you can simply look to update vCarve Desktop or add them in from the toolpaths menu. Install post processor. Browse to those posts, I'll link these below as well. 
once those are pulled in, they would then be visible in your pick list here. What's nice about the post processor options here is this will be saved for any uh, new toolpath created thereafter. In short, we got our first toolpath created. I'm going to go ahead and click Calculate. And we will have this preview here. The second one, uh, the second toolpath here I have created, we'll go back to our 2D view. And I grabbed our outside two paths. So what I'm looking to do here is just create a, uh, a beveled inset for the sign, which would uh, reveal as white. So I select both lines and created the exact same toolpath as before with this selection. So nothing changed here. Uh, it should inherit all the properties if you create this one right after. Want it to be treated as a separate operation. Uh, that's why I arranged it accordingly. Go ahead and confirm the driver output and we'll go ahead and calculate this one too. Delete this auxiliary toolpath, so don't worry about this. All right, so back to our, our layout here. We have our profile cut. So we created the engraved type, the engraved um, boundary or outline, and the profile cut will be one last cut to really remove this or separate the small sign from the sheet. To create this one, I selected the outside boundary of the graphic. This time I went with a profile toolpath. And we'll go through the options here. So first up, I'm going to set the entire depth, which is 0.07, just slightly outside of the material depth. So we're, we're going to punch through our sheet stock here uh, in cutting this out. Below that, we can select our tool here. Uh, I plan to perform all of the engraving with a single tool, so this should be matched up on each. Uh, two passes for this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and up this to three passes in total, and that's just how many uh, paths, uh, how many times it will loop around this to create that actual cut path. Uh, you can change the vector, whether you want this cut line to be on the line, inside, or out. We have some advanced app options which we won't get into now uh, but once you have that set again your cutting depth your tool and your passes uh, being the most important here go ahead and calculate that out and return to this screen now with everything uh, created here we can go ahead and move to the the preview option I uh, see that highlighted here uh, this will open the preview toolpaths window and I just want to preview all toolpaths. This will provide a nice option to uh, inspect our engraving here. So if there's any unusual uh, results in the rendering here or anything doesn't look right, it will allow us to go back and correct the toolpath before actually investing the time or material into this job. In any event, everything looks good here. So I'm going to go ahead and click close we can go to the Save Toolpath option. And we can prepare this one for output. output. So final stretch here. Uh, a few more options for our output here. Because we're combining all of these toolpaths, uh, we want to select the option uh, Visible Toolpaths to One File. So we're going to output one file to the machine, come back to a finished job. That's the idea here. Uh, it gives us a confirmation of our our tool paths and our tools used, so it's going to run through all these as it should. Uh, we're going to adjust that post processor to the SRM20. Confirm that we're outputting directly to the machine and that our appropriate driver is selected. At this point, all there is left to do is output to the machine. So I'll go ahead and do that now, and we can check in on the engraving shortly. All right, we're now back at the SRM20 engraver following the engraving uh, workflow video setup. Let's now take a look at our results. So I'm going to come over to the machine here. 
uh, we've parked this machine in the home position, or of course you can hit the view button on the SRM20 V panel. I'm going to sweep away some of our debris here. Use an old engraving tool and then just remove this from the AS10 sheet. All right. All right, now our little plate is popping right up. Coming out of the machine. And there you have it. So with a little cleanup, we can remove some of these burrs. Uh, but that really concludes our rotary engraving workflow tutorial. Uh, again, we've created these simple pocket fills around the text, the outline of the brim, and of course our profile cut to remove this from the panel. After following this workflow video, we hope that you can apply uh, some of these skills to other future jobs that you seek to run with the SRM20 engraving accessory kit.